Jesus on that main line. Tell him what you want. Oh, that main line. Tell him what you want. I said, Jesus on that main line. Tell him what you want. just have to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Lord, we ask you to lead us and guide us in the direction that you would have us to go. Please, please, please. And Father, we ask you to bless us uh, and build us up where we're all torn down and, and strengthen us where we might be weak as we travel through this barren land. Oh, Father, we just can't thank you enough. Father, we thank you for giving us knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Thank you, oh, Jesus. oh, Father, we thank you for allowing us to obey the government which you have given authority yes. All right. to lead us. All right. But, Father, we realize you are the ultimate authority and the final All right. authority. All right. Father, for that cause, we just have to say thank you. Thank, thank you. Lord. Thank you. Lord, you blessed us, as I said, with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. But along the way, Father, sometimes we have misused these gifts that you have stored well, upon us. Well. And Father, we ask you to please sir, please, sir, please, sir. please sir. bless us to honor you for those of us who are called by your name. All right. All right. And we shall humble ourselves yes. Yes. Yes, and seek your face yes. and turn from our wicked way. Yes. Then will you hear from heaven and, and heal our land. All right. Father, right now we are 
in the need of that blessing. For we don't know from whence this comes and, and where it might go. Yeah. But Father, we ask you to please sir. Please sir. Strengthen us yeah. where we, we can. All right. and, and Father, give us the strength to go through this what we have to. Yeah. But if it is your will, your will, Lord. Father, we will be so thankful. Yes, Lord. Now, Father, we know yes, yes. that sometimes that in this world we may not obey. Yes, Jesus. But Father, those of us who believe in you in your name, in your name. we know we have a second chance. Yes, Lord. All right. Father, you said you will come on a cloud for every eye. Yeah. Can see. Yes. And Father, those who died in believing in your name your shall name. rise first. Yes, when the last trump shall sound. Yes. And the rest will come upon the cloud yes, Jesus. to be with you. Yes, Lord. The saying, howdy, howdy, and never goodbye. Father, we will be so thankful that. You have bid us over to that place yes, that you went away to prepare for us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. We thank you, Father. Thank you. And then, Father, when we are through traveling through and forth down here, yes, we ask you to receive us all without the loss of one. Loss of one. Your servant's prayer we pray. Yes, Amen. 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 Amen.
Thank you, Jesus. We praise your name. Thank you, Jesus. We adore you. Thank you, Jesus, for all you have done. In your holy name we pray. Amen. I want to make a few announcements because we're doing a little different, of course, as all of our churches in this community are. I think Dennis is going to keep us now some basic announcements that we want our members and friends to be aware of. Thank you. Good morning, dear beloved. These are your church announcements. During the month of April, all services will be held via Facebook, conference call, and YouTube. Prayer and Bible study will resume via conference call beginning next Tuesday. All church-related meetings, let me stress that all church-related meetings will be held via conference call. Tithes and offering, offerings may be given and provided uh, during the week, and you may place those tithes and offerings in the church's drop box located in the front of the church. You may also call upon your deacon to pick up your tithes and offering, and additionally, you may give by using the Givelify app. May services are planned to resume at the church, provided the situation with this virus allows us to do so. Otherwise, we will continue with online services until further notice. We ask all of you to continue to pray for one another and to stay safe. You can now Dennis reporting, Elder Dr. Dennis Farrell, Pastor. Thank you. Now we, we know that many of you have already stopped by and left your tithes and offerings in the, in the box on the outside of the church. Those of you who have not, you still can make that happen while we are having our worship service now. You can stop by and drop them in. You just can't come in. <laughs> Amen. But you're welcome to come by. So if you will, if you have your tithes with you, just hold them up. We're going to ask God to bless the tithes and offers. If you're at home and you're listening, you'd like to contribute. You can pull out your tithes and offers and hold it in your hand and we'll pray for you as well. Dear God, we know that all things come from you. And we thank you this day that even when times are difficult, you have made a way for your word to go forth. And God, we thank you for those who recognize the importance of giving that you have blessed us to give, to give our tithes and our offerings, that our word, that your word may go forth. We ask it in the name of your son, Jesus, and for his sake we pray. Amen. Thank you. We want to read our scripture for today. It's taken from the book of St. Matthew, chapter 21, beginning at verse 1. As a matter of fact, you, you go home or wherever you are, you can stand up and just honor God as we read the word of God to you. And it comes from the 21st chapter, verses one through nine. I'll just read it so we won't have to read it together. And the word says, And when they drew nigh to Jerusalem, and will come to Bethpage, unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the villages, and over against you, and straightway ye shall find a donkey tied, and a coat with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. And if any man say out unto you, ye shall say, The Lord has need of them. And straightway he will send them. 
All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughters of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh, unto thee meek and sitting upon a donkey and a colt, the fold of a donkey. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought them the donkey and the colt, and put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others called down the branches from the trees and showed them in the way. And the multitude that went before and they that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the height. And when he was come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, and Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and brought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. And he said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Word of God for the people of God. And they all said, Amen. 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 I hear you, Jack. Thank you. 
still uh, were people all over the, I guess all over the world now since we have on Facebook. We have uh, been challenged. The churches, bring that up, have been challenged. The world has been challenged. Thanks be to God that throughout the history of the church and the universe, there has never been a challenge that God cannot deal with. There's never been a struggle that God cannot change the situation because of who he is. I want to uh, thank the uh, our folks at the church for getting this program organized and our friends uh, uh, in the different parts of the state that we know of. Uh, my wife made sure that all of her relatives uh, tuned in today and others have called our members to make sure that they they called in and some who are watching on Facebook and this same program will be repeated at 11 o'clock on YouTube. So we thank you for that. While wow. God has uh, given us another example of what it takes to get our attention. But none has been as powerful as this one. None has been as impactful as this one. None has got the attention as much as this one has. Amen. We know that viruses have come and some have gone and the Lord get our attention for a moment. We know when the AIDS virus came that got our attention, got our attention for a moment. The Ebola crisis came and got our attention for a moment. Windstorms in Australia and other parts of the country got our attention for a moment. But it seems that we have a tendency to have a great time while it's going on in understanding and trying to see what's happening. But then we forget so quickly, so soon we forget what happened, how it happened, what impact it had on community in the church. All right. But never before has our church has been challenged yeah. to really determine who we are and whether or not we worship the building rather than the church. Yeah. There is a significant difference, my brothers and sisters, in the church that God built. Yeah. For in this church was not built by hands, All right. eternal unto the heavens. It was built by God placed in the hearts of the people and whether or not the building is here or not whether or not you have worship with a full congregation or not but that church is wherever you are All right. yeah. and if you hold up the blood stain of Jesus yes, sir. if you can remember who he is yes, sir. just watch how he works yeah. that you don't have to be in the building my brothers and sisters you don't have to go to jail not for the building you don't have to do that because God is everywhere at the same time. Yes, this is his space. Oh, yeah. Yes, oh, yeah. This is his space. Yes, you can be in your car. You can be on the Georgia Street. You can be yes, on the other side of town. It does not matter where you are, but as long as you understand yes, that the powers of God, the powers of God is with you, yes, is on the inside of you. Yes, and so I was trying to think, Lord, what am I going to say your people today with CNN and MSNBC and everybody but Fox, help me somebody. Uh -huh. He's telling you every moment of the hour what's going on in America. Yeah. Not only in America, but what's going on in the world. The world has got the attention of the world and it's an equal opportunity virus. Yes, sir. Y'all can help me. Uh -huh. It does not matter what you look like. It does not matter what your color is or your race. Yeah. Whether you're rich or poor. Whether you're short or tall. Yeah. Right. Whether you're skinny or a little heavy. Uh -huh. It does not matter. It doesn't matter. This virus knows no one. Yeah. But the thing that we need to know and always remember that God knows what he's doing. 
how he's doing it and what he's doing. He can start and he can stop when he get ready. Yeah. But we've got to pay attention, my brothers and sisters, oh, yeah. to what's going on. So I said, Lord, what am I going to talk about? What yes, am I going to talk about? He said, well, that, that, that's, a, that's, that's a no-brainer. You, you, don't, you shouldn't have no problem with that. That's a no-brainer. You, you need to talk about Jesus. Yeah. Amen. 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 Today is, 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 is the day that, that, that he went into Jerusalem. Uh -huh. The day is the day that he was boarded up on a donkey. Uh -huh. right, the right. day is the day that those who were there threw palm branches and yes, yes, their clothes yes, and made a walkway for him to come through. Uh -huh. Those who were there, they, they were excited about him coming because, number one, they had been disappointed because they were looking for a king that was riding in on a chariot. Uh -huh. right, they were looking for a king that was in royal apparel. Yes, right. But here comes Jesus. Uh -huh. Y'all can hear me All right. All right. Here right, comes Jesus riding on the back of a donkey uh -huh. with, 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 with royal appearance. Uh -huh. Not not clothing, but but his appearance. His he was the son of God, riding in as an uncommon man. Yeah, help me some man. So here he is at that time that I want you to tell them about Jesus, how it got started, how all of this came about. And you have to do in order to do that. You kind of let have to walk back a little bit. You have to start even in Genesis when God fixed the soul. That when 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 he was disobeyed, yes, sir. when he was disobeyed, and when he when he was disobeyed by Adam and Eve and yes, the serpent, and when they messed up, and they had completely messed the whole situation up by dis disrespecting God's will and God's way. Yes, sir. And as a result of that, God put them out and gave each of them their own particular thing that they had to abide by. You remember he put the snake on his back? Yes. Thank God. Uh, 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 all right. All right. He put him on his back and he would crawl and he would eat dust the rest of his life. And I thank God that he would keep him down there because I, I don't care how strong I am. I don't, I'm i scared of a snake. I don't care if he's a black snake or a yellow snake or whatever kind of snake you are. Yes, sir. But they violated and, and they violated and, and, and the woman talked snake and the snake talked the woman and they agreed together yes, sir. that they were going to violate God's rule. Yeah. And as a result, God gave them specific things that would happen to them. He put the snake out and then he put he put he put Adam out because he was pulled to be in charge. Uh, well, all right. Yes, he messed up. Yeah. He 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 messed up because he listened to what he knew was wrong. Yeah. God said, now, now that you messed up, you, you, you know, I had, you had it made. I, I fixed your way for you. I put you in charge. I, I, I let you have dominion over the fowls of the air and the fish of the sea. I gave you charge and you, you messed it up. And now you got to make fend for yourself. You got to get your own food. You got to make your way for yourself. Right. You, 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 you had it made and messed up. Yeah. Have mercy, Lord. Yeah. Wow. And you know, you, you know, wow. you know, he had to throw a little something the woman's way at. And it says that uh, you're going to have to be responsible for a childbirth. Uh -huh. yes, sir. Amen. 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 And I know all the women who listen at me now who had children know that it ain't no easy test. Uh, I heard about it and never wanted to duplicate it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Jesus, Thank you. for how you fixed it. Uh, you know what you're doing. I appreciate you, Lord. Uh, you know, I know they're trying to say now that a man has had a baby, but we all know. And that ain't so. Yeah, ain't so. He might have been fixed up. Help me, Jesus. Yep, all right. That's another whole story. So as a result, so this is how all of this started and how it moved and how, how it matriculated itself through 42 generations. This is Jesus making his way to the earth and making his way to, 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 to fulfill the prophecy that had been said that would happen to him. And I love in, 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 in Isaiah chapter 9, and I'm, I'm going to read it for you so you understand how we got here and what we went through and how, how we experienced it, the things that we experienced because of the things that we disobeyed God for. And he, he said that in Isaiah chapter 9, you know, just bear with me and, and go there for a moment and I'm going to tell you what, what happened. We're going to move, we're going to move because this is so critically important, what he said to him. 
Lord have mercy. Have mercy. He said uh, in Isaiah chapter 9, I believe it was, we're going to find it in a minute. Y'all don't go nowhere. You know, this is new for me. <laughs> take, Amen. Take your time, Pastor. Take it's your time. New. All right, all right. And it's all right because God take your time. is take still your time. God. Yeah. All right. For well, unto us, a son, a child is born, unto us, a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulder. And he be called. He be called the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, and the Wonderful Counselor. All of these things that are written in the Word, not verbatim, not verbatim uh, quoted, but it's in the Word. Yeah. All right. And he said that he's gonna be a Wonderful Counselor, a That's Prince right. of Peace, and all of these things would be would be in him, and that that he will come through these forty two generations. I know we've heard preachers preach all the time about. He came now 42 generations. But I'm going to tell you that a whole lot of things happened in between each one of those. And every generation represented from 23 to 30 years. All right. And so you had, if you went 42 and you used 33, you had over 1,300 years uh -huh. that he went through in order to get where he is going right now. In order to get through where he is right now, he had to go through from, from Abraham to David and my brothers and sisters, those of you who Bible scholars, you know what David went through. You know what David did. You know what Abraham did. Yeah. You know what all of these yeah. saints of God went through. So they had to go from Abraham all the way to David. Wow. Fourteen generations. Then he left David and went from David to the carrying away of Babylon for those people who had disrespected God. Those, those who had violated his principle. Oh, those who had, when he said no, they said yes. Oh, when he said yes, they said no. As a result, they were they were carried away into captivity for over 400 years for messing up. This is what he came to. This, this, is, this is the progression. This is him moving from generation to generation. Those 14. And then from the carrying away of Babylon until Jesus Christ arrived. You remember the story when he was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. You know the story. Yes. So here he is now moving, matriculating from one place to another. When he was just a child, he went into Jerusalem and went down to the temple and began to mingle with the, the doctors and the lawyers and the scribes and the Pharisees, people who were supposed to be the doctors, who were supposed to be in charge, who had all the answers, who they thought they were in charge. And Jesus, a little child, 12 years old, went into the temple and began to ask questions that they couldn't answer. Well, okay. And answer questions that they asked that they had no idea this young lad would be able to tell them anything about Jesus. And when his mama came and found him and said, boy, we've been looking for you. Amen. He said to her, it's time for me to be about my father's business. Amen. Lord have mercy. Amen. And he come, kept continuing to matriculate. And, and one day when John was baptizing in the river of Jordan, you know the story. We're moving on. We're trying to get you now to the day in which he moved into Jerusalem. Why? He was willing to be baptized. John had declared that there was one coming after me that was really before me. And when he come, he would be able to change the world. And, and, and he, I don't know when he's coming, but one day he looked on the shore. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. When he looked amen. on the shore, he saw Jesus, the, the lily of the valley, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. He saw him and recognized him. I said to you that this man, I would not be worthy to stoop down and unleash his shoe. Amen. And here he is asking me to baptize him. Right, Can you imagine what it must have been like? Right. What it should have felt like? Right. When Jesus, the lily of the valley, said, Baptize me, John. I know you're not worthy. All right. All right. Yes, <laughs> I know you. I know you're not worthy. I, I know you. You're not. You're not fixed up for this. I, I know you're not. But baptized, suffered to be so. My brothers and sisters, you remember the story when he took him down and brought him up. The, the heavens opened up, and, and 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 a dog lit on the shoulder and said, "This is my beloved son, yes. who I am with." Yes, yes. Right. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Continue. To matriculate and, and he, he continued to do the things that he was called to do. Yes, sir. He was able uh, to, to take a pair of good, uh, take a pair of eyes 
that was good but couldn't see. Take a paddle leg that was good but couldn't walk. Took a man's hand that was with that he could not fix it, but God was able to transform his legs, or rather his arms, and make them clean again. The same Jesus that, that changed water into wine. The same Jesus that was able to make a transition so that the world will know that who I am, I, I am the one. That I declare to the Lord, if you prepare me a body, I'll go down and I will fix men. I, I will take him from behind the atonement of the priest. And I will fix it so he can call me anytime, any place, and anywhere. That's a God. That's the kind of God that you can you can reach him anytime. You you don't have to come to church to reach him. You you don't have to go in a particular place. Back in the day, there were folks who said if I could only I could only reach him at my favorite oak tree. Yes, help me somebody. I could only reach him at at a certain place, but but the God that we serve, you can reach him anywhere. The God that we serve, we can call him in the morning. We can call him late in the midnight hour. We can call him when, when you're burning down, when you're waking dark, when it seems like there's no way out when you when you have become conflicted with the evil forces. When, when you find yourself become addicted to drugs and, and crime and all of these things, and the God that we serve is able to turn lives around. He's able to change circumstances. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Somebody has been through their valleys and their shadows of death. Somebody had their ups and downs. And it seemed like there was no way out. But you stole away to Jesus and, and called on him. Man. Did he answer? Won't he answer? Won't he come to your rescue? The God that we serve. Continues to matriculate and right. my brother he, he began to tell his disciple that I've got to go again to Jerusalem. I've got to make the final stand. I've got to go into Jerusalem. But they, they didn't want him to go, but Jesus said, I must go through by Jerusalem. Yes, but before he went in, the Bible said he called his disciple together and said, I want you. To go into town and I want you to meet a man and tell him I want him to prepare uh, a donkey so that uh, he be able uh, to ride into Jerusalem. Yes, no, really, he had them to prepare a place in the upper chambers so his disciples could meet with him. My brothers and sisters, normally when they would meet into the upper room, it was for the Passover. Yes, yes, the well, Passover out of Egypt all right. into the promised land. Yes. Uh -huh. But this time it would be a little different. Well, uh -huh. This time rather than the usual Passover. Amen. My Lord and my Savior. Uh -huh. He did something unusual. He began to break some bread. Uh -huh. He said this is my body. Uh -huh. Uh, that was given for you. Take this in remembrance of me yeah. until I return. Uh -huh. Then he took a cup and he blessed the bread and the cup and said, this is my body. Uh -huh. or, this is my blood uh, right. that was shared for you. Yeah. Take this in remembrance of me until I return. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When he finished, Taking the bread and the wine. Well, the Bible said uh, he took a towel and girded himself. Uh -huh. And he took that towel and began to wash his disciples' feet. We're going to get there. Y'all just yeah, wait yeah, a right. while. He, time, he began to wash time. Time. their feet. And, and you know the story why there was some like they are the day. Lord, Peter said, Lord, you shall not wash my feet. Uh -huh. all right, all right. And Jesus said to him, well, if I don't wash the feet, yes, you will not have right. a part oh, with me. Yeah. <laughs> right. Peter said, Lord, not only my feet, wash me all over. Yeah. Because Peter wanted to have 
a part with Jesus. Yes. Is there anybody here today want to have a part with Jesus? Yes. yes. And so after they had finished, he said, I got to go now into Jerusalem. Yeah. <laughs> the Bible said that uh, after they had fixed him up, after the way had made a paved way into Jerusalem, yeah. the Bible said they began to sing a song on his way. Oh, yeah. Hosanna, Hosanna. Oh, yeah. In other words, praise God, praise God. And in a time of trouble, we ought to be able to sing the song, praise God. From whom all blessings flow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. The Bible said as he marched in, they began to speak to themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who is this man? And that word is saying, what kind of man is this? Yeah. When he speak, even the winds obey him. Yeah. What kind of man is this? When he speak, the seas come calm. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. For what you've been to us. And here he is, marching into Jerusalem. And the first thing he did was he went to the temple. He went into the church, if you don't mind. And when he got in, there was a different disposition of the church. There was a different way that he had designed the church. When he walked in, he saw them money changes, the stock exchange. If y'all don't mind, he saw all kind of evil going on in his house. Yes, the Bible said he weep for the city. When he saw what the city had become, I wonder today, is he weeping for America? Is he weeping for the world who seems to have forgotten? I am the one that brought you out. Thou shalt have no other gods but me. Yes. Here is the women out of the temple turning over the money change, doing all kind of stuff. This is my house. This is my house. The house of the Lord. This is where we pray. This is a praying house. Yes, it is. I've got to close. I remember when I was growing up. I remember when I was a boy. We had not the church house. We had a little place that we would all go and pray the Lord. They call it the prayer house. And if you was in that house, even if you didn't know how to pray, one of the deacons would call on your name and you better say something for the Lord. I remember the people were praising, the people were thanking God just like it was, just like it was when he marched in Jerusalem. I came to tell you, world, that the Lord is not pleased with us. The Lord is not happy with us. We've got to change our ways. We've got to change our disposition. We've got to call on the Lord. we got to say, Lord, oh, Lord, if you forgive our sin, I know you'll come back for us. Come on, Jesus. And here I cry. Thank you, Jesus, for your Jerusalem trip. Thank you, Jesus, for coming into the house and clearing it out. Thank you, Jesus, for what you did at, at the, in the temple and what you did in the upper room. Thank you, Jesus, for how you healed the sick and gave sight to the blind. There may be somebody listening to me today. Maybe you do not have your house in order. Maybe you have not accepted Christ as Lord in your life. Maybe you have not bowed down and said, Lord, here I am. Accept me as a son or daughter in your house. If you're here today, wherever you are, it doesn't matter. 
you can pray the prayer of the man who, the two who went before the Lord and one prayed a prayer, a prayer of himself. Lord, I thank you that I'm not like other men. That's where you went wrong. Lord, I thank you I give my tithes. Lord, I thank you I do all of these good things. And then there was another man who recognized his sins, who recognized what he'd been through, who recognized the things and the choices that he had made. He recognized that he was a sinner. He did not try to go and dress it up. He did not try to, to make anything sound like he was this, that, or the other. All he did was say, Lord, have mercy on me. I'm a sinner. I'm a wretch of the Lord. Have mercy on me. You don't need a long speech. You don't say, Lord, I go to church every Sunday. You don't have to say, Lord, I give my tithes if you ought to. You don't have to say, Lord, I, I, I open the doors for you. You don't have to open them anymore. They work automatically. You don't have to do any of that. You can say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I'm a wretch under. I messed up. Lord, I need you to change my life. I'm an addict. I'm a drug addict. I'm, I'm a prostitute. I'm all of the things that I should be. But Lord, if I haven't gone too far, can you please, sir, send out a lifeline for me? I'm willing to accept it. I'm willing, I'm willing, Lord, to change my life. If you're here today, if you're where you are, if you're willing to change your life, you can do it right there. Lord, I accept you as my Savior. The door is open for you. Lord, forgive me for my sins. Lord, I need you. I need you. I'm going through. I can't make it alone. I need you to help me through. Lord, have mercy. God will hear a prayer. If you're sincere, God will hear it. It doesn't matter how long it is, but God will hear it. You don't have to try to impress God because he knows everything anyway. Is that right? You don't have to try to impress God because he knows who you are. Where you been? He know how long you stay. He know everything about you. All you need to do is say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I'm a wretch undone. Have mercy on me is my prayer. And he will come through for you. Amen. As we prepare to close this service, as we stand for closing prayer, wherever you are, bow your heads as we close this worship experience. Lord, have mercy on us. We've all sinned and fallen short of your glory. Yes. Right now, in the name of Jesus, pray that you would have mercy. That you forgive us for our sins. That you would have mercy on us. And Lord, as we leave this place today, if you leave your homes or in your cars or wherever you are, say, so Lord, we know the virus is there. We know that people are leaving us. We know there's death, we know there's injury, suffering. Lord, we pray that you would have mercy. That the virus that's in your hand, that you're able to control. That if it's your will, Lord, please, sir, come to our rescue. I know they can provide all of this, that, and the other, but only unto you. We will seek you, that you can change the circumstances. And we believe that, Lord. We, 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 we trust you for your word. We, we have nothing else to go on. We trust you for your word. You promise that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Lord, we promise. We, 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 we trust your word because your word has brought us through. Your word delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt. Your word has delivered us from slavery. That your word has brought us through, God, when it seemed like it is with no way out. Pray that you would have mercy. Protect us, Lord. Lead us and guide us. In the name of your son, Jesus, Lord, we ask it all because we believe and we trust you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Yes. Y'all stay apart. Just wave at him. Sing that for us. You can turn on YouTube at 11 o'clock and hear the service over here.